Hello again, here with another question bank question in topic 12.2. We're looking at uh, radioactivity and decay. It says the uh, decay equation for radioactive isotope carbon-14 is shown below, and we want to state the name of particle X in the equation. So there's something that came out of the decay. We don't know what it is. Well, let, let's look at what the decay is doing. We have carbon-14 becoming nitrogen-14. So the number of nucleons is staying the same but the proton number has increased. So this tells me that what we're dealing with here is uh, beta decay, where we have a neutron becoming a proton. Now in order to conserve charge, <clears throat> we have positive charge on this side and neutral charge on this side. So we have to add an electron in to conserve charge. Negative and positive become neutral. But one thing that also exists in beta decay is neutrinos and antineutrinos. So the proton formed, the, the proton caused carbon to become nitrogen. The electron is right here in the equation, which means that the unknown particle must be that neutrino or antineutrino. And the way that you know whether, which it is, is to remember that all beta decay has one and only one antiparticle. An electron is not an antiparticle. Proton is not an antiparticle. It must be the neutrino. So in this particular beta reaction, particle X is an anti-neutrino. We're also told to state the class of fundamental particle to which the electron belongs. Electrons are leptons. Our part B says that wood in a living tree contains the isotope carbon-14, all living matter does, all living things do. When the tree dies, though, the amount of carbon-14 in the wood starts to decay away. The half-life of carbon-14 is 5,700 years. Deduce the decay constant of carbon-14. There's a relationship between the half-life and the decay constant. The decay constant multiplied by the half-life is the natural log of 2. So we can use this to solve for the decay constant, which is going to be the natural log of 2 divided by the half-life. That's the natural log of 2 divided by 5,700. You put that in your calculator and you get 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4 years which is what we're after. Next part says that the activity of carbon-14 in one gram of living wood is a quarter of a becquerel. But the activity of an ancient bowl made from the same type of wood is much less than that for the one gram. We want to use this information to determine the age of the bowl, which should be possible, because once the tree stops growing, it stops adding carbon-14 to itself. And so that carbon-14 starts to decay away, its activity decreases. So we can use the change in activity to find out how long ago the tree died and was made into a bowl. And the relationship is much like the relationship for uh, number of atoms, because the number of atoms is proportional to the activity. We can say the activity at any time is equal to the original activity times e to the negative lambda t. So that's our decay equation, but instead of number of atoms, we have activity. So the activity is, uh, the activity now is 0 0.075. The activity originally was 0 0.24. And the decay constant is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4. And we want to solve this for t. So we'll start by dividing by 0.24. 0 0.075 divided by uh, 0.24. Then we have to get rid of this uh, exponent, so we'll take the natural log of both sides. And then we'll divide by negative 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4. So that gives us the natural log of 
0 0.075 divided by 0 0.24. All of that divided by negative 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4, and that gives us 10. All of this can go in the calculator, and we get that the time is 9.5 times 10 to the 3. Well, what are the units? We're given vectorel, and vectorel are a little confusing because they can be based in any amount of time. So we have to look backwards for clues to which time units we're talking about. Are they seconds? Well, an ancient bowl is, is unlikely to have been made 9,000 seconds ago. That, that's not very ancient. So what is it then? Well, looking back here, we see that we've been working in years the whole time. And we've set our activity in per years. Excuse me. That should be per years. And so when you uh, are working in per years, the activity should be based in years. So this time will be in years. Part C says to outline how the half-life of carbon-14 can be determined experimentally. Well, because the half-life is 5,700 years, it's not really appropriate to sit there and watch the carbon-14 decay and measure how long it takes. That's going to take too long. So we need another way. And we'll use the fact that the activity is proportional to the number of atoms in the substance. And the proportionality between them is the decay constant. What that means is that the decay constant gives us a probability of decay in a given time for each individual atom. Multiply that by the number of atoms, and it tells us the number of atoms decaying in a given period of time. That's the activity. So we can use this relationship to find the half-life. We just find the activity. I uh, find the, the decay constant, excuse me. So we'll measure the activity. And that's something we could do with, say, a Geiger counter. And we'll measure the number of atoms. And that's something that we could maybe do by just measuring the mass of the sample. Which allows us to calculate decay constant using this equation here and then solve for the half-life using this equation. The same one we used earlier. So once we have the decay constant we can get the half-life. The decay constant can be calculated using the activity and the number of atoms in the sample.